So hi and welcome everyone to this uh, first session of uh, VMV and VCVM this year. Uh, it's uh, a pleasure to see all of you here and uh, to this tutorial about game engines for visualization. As you've probably seen in the program, we'll start off with a short primer talk and invited industry talk by TWT. And then we'll move over to the uh, workshop tutorial part uh, given by Patrick Jung and Xavier Martinez. Um, so I'm uh, the session chair for today. Uh, my name is Michael Krone. I'm from the, one of the organizers from the University of Tübingen here. And um, I will also so moderate this and um, yeah, uh, give your questions uh, to the speakers afterwards. So this is actually, um, so you know, questions, a little bit of a special session. So usually we only have uh, the YouTube stream during the conference for the scientific talks. And today for the tutorial to make it a bit more interactive, uh, we uh, also admit people to the Zoom room directly, as you might have seen. Uh, we have also posted the link on uh, the Discord channel, but um, of course you can also um, post questions in the Discord channel. Um, one thing uh, we would, uh, while the speakers are, are talking, we would ask everyone to mute their microphone if they haven't done so already, and um, to also turn off their video. I'm not even sure if you can turn it on, I have to admit. Um, uh, but during your discussion uh, phase later on, then you will be able to turn off on your microphone and ask uh, questions to the speakers directly. Okay, so um, as I said, we will start with an invited industry talk by TWT, and uh, we have uh, three speakers here. Um, I will quickly introduce them, and then they will uh, tell you a little bit about their company and um, the product, why they were invited here. So um, first of all, we have uh, Dr. Michael Heckeisen. He studied mathematics at the University of Tübingen. So he has a direct connection to the theoretical venue of this conference. Um, he did his uh, PhD then in computer graphics. So also something graphics visualization related, so to say, and uh, afterwards joined TWT and is now a member of uh, the board of management and responsible for key account management. Uh, the second speaker is uh, Caroline Handel. Uh, Ms. Handel studied uh, uh, technical kybernetics in, at the University of Stuttgart, so also uh, local. Um, and uh, after completing her master's degree, she also joined TWT and is a computer engineer there since 2017. Uh, she's currently responsible for the autonomous systems and the product owner for the simulation tool Tronis. So Tron is, uh, as I said, is the, the reason why we invited uh, TW2, TWT here. Um, it's a software uh, that's based on the Unreal game engine. Uh, so as you can see, game engines are not only relevant for the entertainment industry um, and for academic research, but also in, are also used in industry for visualization and, and simulation right now. And uh, last but not least, we have uh, Dr. Felix Kistler. Um, he studied computer science at the University of Augsburg and received his PhD in the area of human-computer interaction in 2015. And um, during the time, he already gave lectures and practical courses about game development. And um, in 2016, he became a software architect and later a project manager at uh, TWT. And uh, yeah, as I said, um, they will now uh, tell you a little bit about the company and about uh, the software Tronis, which is, as I said, based on Unreal. So thank you for being here. And uh, yeah, stage is yours now. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Professor Krone, for the introduction uh, and the opportunity to present here uh, on this conference and in this tutorial. Uh, so we will talk about Tronis and Genvis from Unreal to Real World Simulations. As you can see, we tried a little play on words here. Uh, um, uh, maybe we go directly to the next slide. Uh, exactly, we introduced this already. Uh, TWT stands for in German Technisch Wissenschaftlicher Transfer, in English Technical Scientific Transfer. Um, and um, our strategy is to transfer scientific knowledge uh, into industrial applications. We do this with our 350 employees. All of them have an academic background and then about 40% uh, have a PhD. Our customers and partners are the research and development departments uh, of the companies you see on the right hand side. 
Our locations are in Stuttgart, this is our headquarter, and in Munich, in Ingolstadt and Friedrichshafen, quite next to the uh, research and development departments of our main automotive uh, customers. And we have some offices here in Tübingen in the Neckar Hub. In addition to our industry projects, we take part in publicly funded research projects in order to acquire new knowledge and new technology in order to maintain our claim and principle we know how. Here you see the topics we address, uh, ranging from systems engineering over artificial intelligence and data science to enterprise data solutions. In some of uh, them, we have used game engines recently to solve industrial problems. And we will show some examples in this, in this presentation. What we think, what makes us special is that we tackle all topics with an interdisciplinary approach with skills from computer science, mathematics, physics, engineering, but also, for example, from psychology and communication sciences. We believe that only with an interdisciplinary approach, real world problems can be solved. Can we go to the next? Uh, here you see our main areas of research. In the last years, we have completed more than 50 research projects, written more than 200 publications, we have established a partner network with more than 100 top partners, as well as academic as industrial, and more than a dozen TWT colleagues have become professor, which again strengthens our academic network. We have a clear focus on our academic network for new, new knowledge and new technology, but also because this is the way we find new talented employees. So this for a very brief overview of TWT. Uh, now I hand over to Caroline Hantel. Thank you. So um, now uh, I will give a, a brief uh, introduction to Tronis and um, Genwis Unreal Engine meets TWT. But uh, at first, um, uh, the, the question, why Unreal Engine? Why do we use a gaming engine in industry? That's maybe a little bit weird, but um, uh, if, if you uh, look at it that way, we uh, to de de develop uh, fully uh, autonomous vehicles, we, we cannot um, re uh, rely on real world tests alone. We need simulation for that to cover the hundreds of millions of test kilometers. Uh, only with, with all the, these um, tests, we can ensure safety for, for all. Um, and the simulations must be as close to reality as possible, not only in physics, but also, also in uh, visuals, because photorealism is key for some um, algorithms like object detection. Most of the cars have cameras um, now installed that, um, that detect uh, pedestrians, uh, cars or other uh, objects just based on visuals. Uh, but we cannot get all the testing data to train those algorithms with only test drives alone. So we need simulation. But typically the simulation tools cover uh, physics very good, but the visuals not so much. But on the other hand, the games nowadays are so realistic. So the, 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 the visuals are so realistic that you cannot distinguish between the game and the reality anymore. As you can see here, uh, for example, the, the preview of the Unreal Engine 5, um, it has really, really realistic and, and fantastic views, and we want to make use of that. On the other hand, we have um, uh, realistic physics engines in the Unreal Engine as well. We, uh, there, there are um, there's this physics, physics engines of NVIDIA, which we can uh, make use of. And the, of course, the Unreal uh, Scene Editor, which enables us to uh, create scenarios or levels in the gaming talk. But on the downside, uh, if you have opened the Unreal Engine Editor, or if not, you will see in the next tutorial, it is quite complicated. But um, uh, and uh, for for beginners, it's it's hard to to get used to, um, and. It's also originally designed for game development, of course. So there are some features uh, missing which are automotive related. And that's why we said 
we want to use this gaming engines for our simulations, but there are some parts missing. Why not make it uh, ourselves? That's how Transys came to be. So we, well, sorry, the, the slide doesn't make what I want it to do. So now, Tronis. So we use all the benefits from the Unreal Engine. So the photorealistic graphics, the realistic physics engine, and the scene editor. And on top of that, we add a workflow-oriented UI for automotive use cases, modular, um, modular uh, tools like simulation environment, traffic, sensors, communication stack, and so on to, to get a, a basic tool set to enable automotive simulations. Um, and since we don't do all the algorithms ourselves um, and our customer wa um, want to test their algorithms as well, uh, we added an SDK to simply connect their uh, tools and programs to uh, our Tronis simulation. And with this tool set, we have a good basis to cover all use cases such as navigation deployment, uh, development, di uh, digital twin creation, training of neural networks, scenario re reconstruction, sensor simulation, and of course, software and hardware in the loop. And with this small introduction, um, I want to uh, give some short um, short examples of our, our real projects that we did or do with Tronis. Our first example is our TWT truck. Um, we wanted to see how far we can go with the uh, creation of a digital twin. So we decided to um, get a, a little truck, a, um, a, a truck model, um, and want, uh, wanted to drive it autonomously inside our headquarters in Stuttgart, virtual and uh, uh, in real reality as well. L let's see how we dealt with that. So you can see here our headquarters in Stuttgart in reality and virtually. Uh, and of course, um, we modeled not only our headquarters, but the truck as well. The truck is um, um, uh, has a, a stereo camera on the top, and uh, on the trailer um, uh, it has a um, Intel i7 core and a um, Nvidia graphics card inside to um, create a segmentation algorithm. Um, the segmentation algorithm is trained with uh, just the camera data from the stereo uh, from a stereo camera. Um, um, but it is mostly trained with Tronis data. As you can see here on the uh, bottom view, we can easily create training uh, data fully um, segmented and labeled uh, with, uh, in Tronis within minutes to, to get the segmentation done and ready. We used all, about 1,000 virtual training data and uh, 100 real training data to achieve this. So you can see on the um, bottom, you can, um, it, uh, the algorithm can even, even um, deal with uh, reflections on the, uh, on the ground. Um, our truck is driving autonomously. So we um, don't um, do anything but press start to start the algorithm. And it has to locate itself and create a map. And uh, it does this with a um, SLAM algorithm. Uh, if you don't know what this means, SLAM stands for Simultaneous Localization and Mapping. Um, I'll just stop here. Um, uh, with SLAM, you get um, as an input the stereo camera, and this um, computes um, uh, or creates a map with, um, uh, while detecting features in, in, this, uh, in this image. And if you, uh, if you look at the rectangles, the green rectangles are the features that, that are already recognized within the created map. And the red ones are new features that uh, will be added in the map for future runs. And the map is, um, is created on the go. So we start with nothing 
um, and just keep going. And then uh, the map is created. Uh, if, we, um, if we see an obstacle in front of our path, then we replan um, to uh, get to our goal. So that's basically um, what we did with our tr in, uh, within our truck project. And since this worked uh, great, we, uh, we wanted to do more. In our next project, SAFE, which is a research project with um, more, more um, partners like um, Audi or 3D Mappings or the Technische Hochschule Ingolstadt, uh, we wanted to uh, create a virtual test field of the city of Ingolstadt to, um, uh, to enable um, uh, 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 to, uh, to create safety in automated uh, and networked driving. To, um, and for that, we um, scanned the uh, city district of Ingolstadt with LiDAR and camera data um, and used this data to recreate this district within Tronis uh, photorealistically. Um, and to get some, uh, some movement in the scenes, we, um, defined, um, we defined scenarios with uh, an op the open format, uh, open scenario. It's a, a text-based um, standard to describe uh, uh, situations like um, pedestrian movement, traffic situations, etc. With this tool set, we want to um, create a good basis to enable test, uh, testing of autonomous driving vehicles within Ingolstadt. And also um, with, with our um, environment that we um, modeled in Tronis, we um, did in cooperation with our partners some case studies with uh, virtual reality glasses to um, uh, see the reaction of pedestrians and co-drivers in this autonomous driving environment. So far for, for my part, now um, my colleague uh, Felix Kistler will take over and uh, tell you a bit more about uh, other projects we did. Exactly. Um, I will present several projects which uh, use Tronus and the Unreal Engine as visualization and testing environment. The first project is about interactive visualization. In this project, we had a customer that already had a simulation, but previously used a simple 2D engine for visualization. <clears throat> to get a more realistic presentation and to add additional interactivity, we replaced the 2D engine with Tronis. The 2D scenario was rebuilt in 3D, in which users can freely choose a perspective inside or outside the vehicle, as you see in the screenshots on the right-hand side. We further added a replay functionality, so it is possible to pause and resume, to fast forward and rewind, or directly to jump to a specific point in time. In the interactive and more realistic environment, the customer could now much better evaluate the simulation results and also it served for a better marketing the simulation. Um, next slide, please. The second project integrated virtual reality in a ride simulator. In this case, the customer already had a ride simulator that consisted of a moving platform on which the participant sat and it also had a video of a street drive that was projected in front of the participant. The ride simulator should allow the participant to validate the driving comfort, but there was no coupling between the movement and the video. So again, uh, we used Tronis and in this time, in combination with VR glasses, to make the simulation more realistic and to provide an immersive experience. The 3D environment was matched to the movement of the simulation to fit together. And with this more 
realistic simulation in VR, the overall goal was to reduce the need for real test drives. The results of, our, of this project uh, were published on last year's EDM CAE forum uh, together with uh, Daimler. Uh, next slide, please. Um, another project that we presented on this forum was our system for automated endurance testing shown on this slide. Again, the goal was to avoid real test drives. But in this case, the test drives were moved from the real street onto a test site shown on the aerial image on the right hand side, upper right hand side. In addition, multiple vehicles should drive automatically. So without any driver, but only a single operator that watches the vehicles from the tower. We designed and implemented almost the complete software architecture, ranging from front end for the operator, the back end, uh, and to the controller that runs on the vehicle itself and communicates via LTE. Apart from the implementation, we also supported our customer with a commis commissioning and we spent really lots of days on site for testing and for improving the system. To make especially the last point more efficient, we used Tronis as a software and hardware in the loop uh, testing. We therefore took our complete uh, software architecture and only replaced the part that connected to the actual vehicle and we replaced it with a connection to Tronis and a virtual vehicle. In this way, we could test adaptions to our system in a virtual environment before going on the real test site. Apart from the presentation on the EDM CIE forum, this project uh, should also be presented on the Stuttgarter Symposium this year. Uh, unfortunately, this one was uh, cancelled be because of uh, the corona, corona crisis, but uh, ne nevertheless, our article uh, was published uh, via Springer, so you can um, download it. Okay. The last project or software that I present is uh, Genvis. It's our software for visualizing simulation results in the field of computational fluid dynamics. Genvis visualizes, visualizes both the geometry and the simulation re results in virtual reality again, and the user can intuitively explore the simulation data. Um, for example, by getting an exploded view that you just saw of the vehicle, or by uh, applying cutting planes that is uh, now visualized in the video, or by um, isolating components of interest. Genvis first preprocesses the simulation data so that the size of the data is reduced from multiple uh, gigabytes to only a single gigabyte, for example. And uh, in this way, it can be shown on customer hardware in real time. Genvis is connected to common simulation software as used by Audi, BMW, or Daimler. In the video here, you see an AMG GTR that we are allowed to present. And as you see, um, we apply the HTC Vive with associated controllers uh, to get an interactive virtual experience. So here, um, one component of interest that is isolated um, to get the detailed um, thermodynamics data. Thank you, and uh, I hear hereby uh, pass over to my colleague, Herr Keckeisen, again. Okay, <clears throat> yes. So uh, we are almost at the end. Uh, thank you for listening and watching. 
So if there is the time, uh, we are ready to answer some questions. Just two notes. Um, first, if you are from industry, you can, of course, buy one or more Tronis licenses. Just let, let us know. If you are from university you're, and you're interested, uh, we could provide you with three Tronis licenses for research and education. Again, just let us know. Uh, and if you're interested in joining our team, you will find open positions on our website. Um, you might use this QR code to go there. Uh, this should work. So, Professor Gorne, I think, so far from us. Yeah, thank you for this uh, interesting overview. Um, before we move on to the next part, so now that we have seen what uh, you can do with an uh, engine like Unreal, um, we um, will later move on to how you can do these things. But uh, first of all, uh, if there are any questions for our speakers. Uh, you can now raise your hand uh, virtually in, in Zoom and uh, ask questions directly or uh, ask them in the um, in the development, uh, in the, sorry, in the, in the game engine uh, chat in Discord. Um, I would actually uh, start off with a question that uh, came to my mind when I uh, saw your presentation. Um, so you talked about this, this uh, layered software infrastructure that you created, um, if I understood that correctly, on top of uh, the Unreal Engine. Um, I guess that's very hard to estimate, but um, of course, also as a software developer, so to say myself, uh, how much um, effort would you say um, did the, the, the game engine take off your hands? So how much... Uh, time did it save you and how much difficulties did you have to solve? So were there any, any tricky cases where the software was not just playing nice, so to say? <laughs> okay. Um, I, I'd say the um, software, to answer your first question, uh, so Unreal Engine um, helped a lot um, for the uh, visualization part. So we didn't have to do anything for that. Um, I'd say this this saved us a lot of hours. Maybe I don't know. Maybe, maybe a year of development, maybe longer. So uh, the photorealism of, of uh, Unreal comes uh, free, free of charge. We have uh, a lot of um, assets in the Epic Store. Uh, um, we 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 can use. So uh, that's a lot of uh, time we saved just by using the Unreal Engine. And uh, the tricky part, um, I think the, the trickiest part is um, to uh, customize the engine code uh, when um, some functionalities are not exactly as we wanted in industry and have to really adjust the, the editor. Um, because uh, since, since the um, Unreal Engine is open source and uh, many developers are um, contributing to it, um, it, it can be sometimes tricky and sometimes the code looks like like a, a, a really great patchwork uh, that you have to uh, understand and make use of so i think that's the that's that's a, a great difficulty um, or challenge that um, to to adjust this 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 real big open source project to our customer needs Um, you, uh, and I should probably turn on my microphone. I'm sorry. Um, so we have a, a question here. Um, what model architectures did you use for the segmentation analysis of the images seen by the truck? Did you design the architecture from scratch or did you use a well-known pre-trained network? Okay, so um, we used um, we used KittySec um, to, uh, to get started and the uh, seg seg semantic segmentation suit. Um, because we uh, we don't want to do any uh, everything from scratch. Why um, why invent something that is already working and good? So what we uh, mainly did is adjust what it was already there. And another question here in the Zoom chat: um, Unreal Engine comes with two uh, SDKs, Blueprint and C plus plus. Which one did you use mostly? Um, so uh, we use mostly C plus plus. 
um, but uh, blueprints are very good for a quick uh, prototype. So we use this if we want to um, if we want to um, test something, um, a new feature, a quick feature, very fast. Um, and th that's where we use blueprints. Also, uh, the functionalities we create uh, within Tronis, um, we, we make bl blueprint uh, blueprintable. So uh, all of uh, most of our functions are also available in bl bl blueprints. So we try to use both SDKs um, uh, to, to get the best of it. Okay, we have time for one or two more questions. Um, since I don't see uh, any questions right now, I have one more question of my own. I mean, since this uh, tutorial is about Unreal and Unity, it would of course be interesting um, to hear something about how you made the decision, which of these two big players to choose, basically. If you mm -hmm. can something can say something about this. Yeah. So. Um... Of course, this this was one of the questions we uh, we asked ourselves as, uh, as well. What game engines uh, do we want to use? And we de decided uh, to use Unreal Engine first because uh, uh, we think um, that the graphics are better. So um, if if you uh, compare them, the graphics of the Unreal Engine are um, more more sophisticated. And second, um, it's much easier easier to get the real source source code of of the Unreal Engine than of Unity. For Unity, you have to sign some contracts and get maybe some parts of the code, um, and uh, so it's it's much easier to get re uh, get started real fast with the Unreal Engine. So that's why we uh, decided to use it. I, I still I still am a little little bit suspicious that that at, at the time of the decision a few years ago, uh, a few of our uh, main developers were playing Unreal games. Uh, maybe this had something to do with the, with the decision too. You never know. Yeah, it's the probably older and more well-known engine, at least back at that time, yeah. Exactly. Okay, I still see someone typing in the chat. Ah, yeah. Um, yeah, um, to uh, Leslie, it's not clear how all the nice things that you show come together. Um, so is the Unreal Engine mostly used for the virtual reality visualization or also for the for the test drives and uh, so how does this um, come together into a service from your company so um, we we um, use an unreal engine as a basis and uh, put some Tronus functionality on top um, in in the form of plugins um, if you um, um, may, maybe you're aware of that that unreal engine um, is, uh, consists of the Unreal Engine source code and then a lot of plugins. And we, we put our functionality um, as um, plugins, uh, combine it with the Unreal Engine, put some of our um, functionalities that cannot be in plugins as patches, so uh, change the Unreal Engine. Um, and then we create, um, we cre uh, create this, this new tool which has as a basis, the Unreal Engine, but merges with all the functionalities that we put on top. The Unreal Engine parts that we use are mostly the visuals um, and the um, and the physics engine uh, that, uh, from from NVIDIA. Um, and what we added is, for example, a LiDAR sensor. Um, we added a functionality to get um, easily get the images of the camera sensor that is in the Unreal Engine um, to um, to the SDK, and um, so uh, we we try to merge the Unreal Engine with Tronus to get a new um, or the the functionalities we added to to one um, to one new um, product, which is Tronus. Okay, in the Discord channel, we have a follow up question. Uh, is the modification of the source code of the engine and the Unreal Editor something that was necessary to do? Uh, or would you be able to build a visualization if you use it out of the box? So how much did you modif did need to modify Unreal Engine? Mm -hmm. So for the visualization uh, visualization part alone, we don't need any plugins, uh, any patches. Uh, we uh, also are um, able to use all of our model modules without the patches, but um, we, we added some patches to get some uh, performance um, um, uh, to, to make the performance better. For example, the, um, um, the, the sensor output 
uh, can be done with Unreal Engine functionality without patches, but it's very slow. Um, if we add our patches, we can make it uh, more efficient and uh, basically make the simulation run faster because we get the data faster. That's one example. But we can use our modules without patches as well. OK, thank you. Um, as I said, we are running out of time a little bit. Um, so I would say uh, let's thank all our uh, speakers again here and move on to the next part of the tutorial. And I also posted um, the link to the Discord channel again. Uh, so we have a dedicated Discord channel for the tutorial. And uh, I would uh, ask the speakers maybe to, to look at the channel later on and uh, see if any other questions popped up because to, to keep in track of the time we, we have to, to move on. But yeah, thank you. Thank you for this uh, nice introduction and, and uh, overview of what you're doing. Yeah, thank you too. And have a good tutorial. Thank you. <laughs>